Hi, welcome to Give Me a Word, where we take a couple minutes and break down a passage of Scripture and look specifically at the words. It's a word study, and maybe glean out some meaning that will make the passage just a little bit better, more understandable, uh, more meaningful to you. And at least when you read it, you'll say, oh, yeah, I understand that a little bit better now. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Again, I'll read out of uh, a more, um, maybe a less familiar text for some of you. It says this, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. You say, boy, that, that, that's not the translation I'm used to hearing, I know. Um, but I did it this way simply so we could break it down and look at it a little bit better because what this is talking about um, is people who worry about their own things but don't care much about the things of others, which is how that verse breaks down, right? Let not every man, uh, look not every man on his own things. In other words, don't look at your own stuff. But every man also, look at those things of others. It doesn't mean you don't, you're not concerned with the things that you have, but it means that you're looking at others and trying to figure out where their need is. Um, you've met people, I've met people that fall into this trap. Maybe you have, but probably not, because you're watching this, so I'm talking about other people today. Um, and you know who I'm talking about. They are people who are self-absorbed. Their focus is so turned inward that they can't muster the energy or the strength to think about anything or anyone other than them, themselves and how they view the world. It's that conversation where you're having with somebody and then they go all of a sudden, oh, I've been spending all this time talking about me. What do you want to say about me? Again, because they make every conversation about them. Self-absorbed. And that's what this verse is talking about. It's, it's a warning, if you will, that Paul is writing to the church at Philippi uh, telling them not to become so self-absorbed that they miss out on an important thing. The word that's used there is look, is look, and it is a present active participial of the word scopio. The word scopio means to look intently or focus on something. It's where we get the idea of a hunting scope. If you've ever looked through a rifle scope and you use the crosshairs, that's the idea that's behind this word. Um, in this case, Paul's talking about people who are so completely fixated on themselves that that's all they see, and they're seeing it, trying to see it so clear with such detail. They're scoping in on themselves, and he's telling them, this is not a good way to be. This is not a good way to act. Um, this is what you're not supposed to be as part of the kingdom of God. I got news for you. This is an issue that people struggle with today just like they did then. As a matter of fact, people don't want to deal with this issue most of the time in their spiritual life. They actually run from it. Um, and that's why Paul actually continues to say, look not every man on his own things. Every man is a word that means every man. No one's excluded. Paul is now throwing out this bigger idea here that you know what? Regardless of who you are, how much you've done with your life, it is wrong to be so self-absorbed that all you see is your own deeds and your own needs. You have to learn to look to others. Uh, and he say, uses this phrase, but every man also on the things of others. Again, the same idea. No one's excluded. You have a responsibility. You're going to see people around you all the time that have needs. And instead of focusing on yourself, learn to focus on others. The great news about this is that um, it's a good way to live. It's a healthy way to live. It allows you to not be so consumed with what's going on in your world that you start excluding what's going on in the world of others. Self-centeredness is easily detectable because it doesn't take long to be around somebody and figure out, oh, they are very focused on themselves what they want, what they need, what they think, and they are quick to share that with you. And we see that in others much more quickly than we see it in ourselves. But Paul, he's lasered in on us, you and me. Uh, he's not talking about the way that um, others are guilty of practicing self-centeredness in your world. He's talking about you as an individual, me as an individual. And what he's saying is, when we interact with people, when we engage with people, when we look at the world and try to love the world like Jesus loved the world, 
Don't make it all about you. But again, make it about Jesus and make it about them. And if you can be absorbed with Jesus, then it's easier for you to meet the needs of others and you'll discover that your eyes aren't so much on yourself. Sadly, for a lot of people, they battle with and this becomes a lifelong struggle because by nature our default is to think about ourselves. Self-preservation, self-desires, self-motivation. And because we're so guilty of thinking about ourselves, we miss opportunities uh, to meet the need and bless others. Don't do it. That's what the warning's about. That's what the word means. Take that scope that you look at your life with and use it to look out into the distance to start to see others. And when you do, you will then be ready to change our world. That's what the word says. The word doesn't lie. So we'll go again next time and we'll discover more and give me a word.